Welcome to our resurrection services. If you would sing with us, Christ Arose. Sing all three verses, sing out on the first verse. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foe. in the house of the Lord today, and we're thankful that you're able to join us via the internet, and this is Resurrection Sunday, we call it Easter Sunday, and uh, it's a special day, and we're so, so thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ arose, amen? Uh, I hope that you're uh, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and if, if uh, Christ didn't rise, then our faith is in vain as the Bible teaches us, but he did arise, and so we are thankful, we're glad that you're able to join us via the internet for the time being, hopefully a few more weeks and we'll be able to come back to meeting, at least that's our hope and prayer. And we'll see uh, if the Lord allows us to do that, but we'll uh, say more as time goes on. I do want to just, uh, just remind you of something here. We are doing a lot of things here at the church while we're not able to meet. And uh, if any of you uh, gentlemen have some time and maybe you could come up and help us for a day, uh, please call me uh, if you're a member of the church and uh, give me a call and I'd be happy to kind of tell you what we got going on where we could use your help. And uh, if you can come up, that would be wonderful to help us get a couple more things accomplished. And so I don't want to say anything about it right now other than just if you'd like to be able to do that, call me and let me give you some information. We are uh, uh, pleased to have uh, Miss Christy playing the piano for us. Brother Ken's leading our music and so we're going to have him come and lead us in another song and we just appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule and I know we're all busy right we're all on sort of a unwanted vacation and so uh, we're glad you're able to be with us today and, and have taken the time to do that may the Lord bless you as we come together to uh, open the Word of God break the bread of life literally and just uh, uh, hear from the Lord today all right come on brother Kenneth All right, let's uh, sing out that hymn, He Lives. Let's sing all three verses of He Lives. On the first. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. 
I know that he is living, whatever man may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He singing with us. Our family is going to come and sing at this time the borrowed tune. Yes. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for the Ralph and family. Amen. If you have a Bible and if you're sitting at home out there, I know that you've got one at home somewhere, at least one. Grab your Bible, uh, if you would, and, and get ready to turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. We're going to look at verses 1 through 8 together. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to, uh, to 8 uh, together this morning, talking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse number 1 is where we'll begin reading. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here for he is risen, as he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. Let us pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, this day would not be possible without Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, given, Lord, to pay for the sin of the world. And so we are thankful, Lord, that as we come together this Sunday, we know that we're, we're doing something different due to the virus, but we know also, Lord, that it doesn't matter where we're at, you're with us, and we're gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, and we humbly ask, Lord, for your presence. I pray that, Lord, as you're with us here in the, the church, uh, Lord, uh, that you will be with those that are sitting at home uh, this very hour listening to this and watching. God, I pray that you might encourage hearts, that, Lord, if there be one of them, Father, that doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior, that today would be the day that they'll come to know him as their personal Savior. What a joy it would be to have a soul come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ on this Easter Sunday morning. Thank you for the privilege of coming together, Lord, and opening your word and reading it. We claim the blessing that is promised, and we ask for your presence and power. In Christ's wonderful name we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Easter means a lot of different things to different people. To some, Easter means egg hunts, big family dinners. For many people, it symbolizes the coming of spring. For others, it is a day to wear new clothes and to go to church and spend time with the family. The story is told of a little boy whose daddy was a mortician. Uh, and when he heard the story of Jesus on Easter Sunday, the little boy said, Do you mean that Jesus really rose up from the dead? Oh, yes, his Sunday school teacher said. 
The little boy shook his head. I know my daddy didn't bury him or he'd never get up again. And we might laugh at that, but to a lot of folks, that's kind of what they think. Christ didn't rise. Why do so many people attend church on Easter Sunday? What makes Easter Sunday different from the other 51 Sundays throughout the year? Probably because in Easter Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. New hope, new life. This prompts me to ask another question. Why is the resurrection of Christ so important? Do you ever think about the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ on any time other than Easter Sunday? That event that took place some 2,000 years ago, why is it so important to us today in our fast-paced, technological, stress-filled information age in which we live? What should the resurrection of Christ mean to those of us who are believers and followers of Jesus Christ? Why should those of us who serve in the church every Sunday see this Sunday as being any different from any other Sunday? What should the resurrection of Christ to to, to, to those, uh, I mean to those who believe in Christ but are so busy with their jobs and their families, paying the bills and cooking meals and getting the kids back and forth to ball games and so forth. What should it mean to them, we might say? What should the resurrection of Christ mean to those who are sincere skeptics? I'm not talking about atheists, but just those people who have not yet kind of bought into uh, the Christianity thing. Those who are simply what we call kicking the tires of the church and exploring the claims of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what I want to do today is give you three simple results of the resurrection to tell you what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means to me. Number one, the resurrection guarantees my salvation. I know that. Mary Magdalene had a life-changing experience. In Luke chapter 8, 2, the Bible tells us that she had been possessed by seven devils. Imagine the hopelessness and convulsions and the fear of being tormented by those demons day and night for an extended period of time. One day she met a man that changed all that, changed her life. Jesus brought her glad tidings of the kingdom of God and removed her demons. Not only was she cleansed and saved, she also gained new friends. Many verses indicate that she was close to Jesus' mother and the mother of James and John. Mary Magdalene became a very close follower of Jesus Christ herself. For Mary, nothing could be more depressing than her shattered dreams. Think about it. She must have been so excited to see Jesus ride into Jerusalem on that donkey amidst the great shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna, as we spoke of last week. Likewise, she must have been shocked to learn that he had been arrested and faced six false trials in one night. She must have shed bitter tears at the foot of the cross. Why, why, she must have cried and asked within herself. In Matthew 27, 55 through 56, we see her with the other women lingering at the cross. The Bible says, beholding afar off. Later, they watched as Joseph and Nicodemus reverently laid Jesus' body in that tomb. Hope, seemingly to Mary, was gone. The one she loved and held dear was dead. There was nothing but emptiness and despair in her life. Note that God rolled away a stone for Mary. After the Sabbath, on the first day of the week, she along with Mrs. Zebdee came to see the tomb. Perhaps they remember Jesus' words about rising on the third day. I think it was uh, the duty of anointing his body, putting off as long as uh, possible the inevitable decay that brought them to that tomb. They felt tremors beneath their feet as an earthquake shook the ground. Suddenly they saw an angel of the Lord who came down from heaven. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. The guards shook for fear and became like dead men, the Bible tells us. The angel then addressed the women. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Ask yourself this question. Why did the angel roll away the stone? 
Jesus was already gone. He didn't need any help getting out. Someone said the heavy uh, ponderous stone that sealed the uh, tomb of Jesus in confines of that rock wall tomb was about but a pebble compared to the rock of ages which was inside the tomb. The stone was rolled away, not so Jesus could get out, folks, but so that Mary and others could get in to see that the tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away to give Mary a newfound hope. The same Christ who moved the stone for Mary brings salvation to our lives also. Jesus said in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He comes to roll away the stones of sin, guilt, and shame. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And so we need to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth and took upon him the form of a man. He became flesh, God in the flesh. The Bible says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, God in the flesh. And Christ became flesh, folks, so that He might face death on the cross of Calvary as the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world, the Lamb who laid down His life willingly, sacrificially, substitutionarily on the cross of Calvary, shedding His innocent, sinless blood, paying for the sin that you and I commit and that the world commits, but because He who knew no sin became sin for us, and He died on the cross, shedding His innocent blood, paying for the sin of the world. He comes to roll away the stones of purposelessness depression, discouragement, and apathy. Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Christ wants to have a more abundant life here and now, and we are certainly, my dear friends, going to have a more abundant life in the hereafter. So Christ came to pay the penalty for sin. And the stone was rolled away from the tomb to let others see that he had risen from the dead exactly as he had said he would do. And so we need to know that the resurrection guarantees our salvation. I'm saved. He lives and I shall live with him someday. Number two, the resurrection validates my faith. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29, if you'd like to turn there and take a moment. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29. The Bible says, In the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad. When they saw the Lord, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sh uh, sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Verse 24 says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he saith unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print uh, of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, 
and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, and reach uh, and, and, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas was what we might call a realist. Verses 19 through 23 record the first visit of Jesus to the disciples after the resurrection. They were glad when they saw him. For some reason, Thomas was absent. We're not given why. He didn't believe their story when they told it to him. He wanted proof. Nail holes and a spear wound is what Thomas wanted to see. We see that Thomas found faith. The Bible says after eight days, Jesus returned to the disciples. Thomas was then present. Jesus invited Thomas to touch his wounds and said, And be not faithless, but believing. Believing Christ requires faith, my dear friends. Many people today are like Thomas. They are critical. They refuse to believe because they have no faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When you examine the evidence of the resurrection, it is easier to, uh, it is easier to believe than not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Jesus made many unbelievable claims about his deity. His resurrection validates every single one of those claims. Only God could rise from the grave. Note Jesus' words in verse 29. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Those words still ring true today. I've never seen Jesus Christ face to face, but I do believe because I believe the Word of God is real and sure and true and it is to be believed, and I believe that we can trust the Word of God because it is God's Word, and I don't question that. And so we can believe, and so I believe I am blessed in a special way. I understand and looked it up. They, they tell me that the deaf have a special sign for Jesus. Guess what that sign is? They take their hand, their dominant hand, and with the middle finger, they touch the center of the palm of the other hand, and then vice versa again, Take the other hand and touch the center of that. Why? Because they're signifying the nails. Jesus Christ is the only one who ever had nail prints in his hands, my friend, who was crucified on an old cool Roman cross, taken from that cross and buried, and praise God, arose from the grave, victorious over death, hell, sin, and the grave. On the third day, the tomb is empty. He is not there because he has risen from the dead. They say that another Thomas, a man by the name of Thomas Jefferson, one of our founding fathers of our country, could not accept the miraculous events of Scripture. He was a real realist. He edited his own version of the Bible in which all supernatural references were deleted. He just, what he literally did was he took a Bible, he cut it out, and he pasted it on pages, putting it in the order that he preferred it to be in. Skeptically, the closing words of Jefferson's Bible read this. There laid they Jesus and rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. For Thomas Jefferson, that was the end because he did not believe in a resurrection. How sad that so many refuse to exercise faith and believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Number three. The resurrection ensures my hope. John chapter 21. John chapter 21. After these things, beginning in verse 1, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana of Gal in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, <clears throat> and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? 
They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many. Yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then <clears throat> cometh and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. <clears throat> Verse 15, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldst not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, following we see that the disciples went fishing in this biblical incident. They went back to Galilee and fished all night, having caught absolutely nothing. At sunrise, they saw Jesus, who instructed them to cast on uh, their net on the other side of the boat. They did so and caught a boatload of fish. When Peter recognized Jesus, he swam to shore, and there Jesus had cooked a great breakfast for them. Peter was given hope. Peter remembered denying the Lord three times. Think about that. In verses 15, 16, and 17, Jesus asked Peter three questions. Do you love agape me? That's agape love, a love without limits. Do you love me more than these? Meaning the other disciples. Do you love me? Do you love Philo, me? In verse 18, Jesus assures Peter that he believed in him, signifying his faithfulness even unto death. Peter had finally been truly converted and really recognized who Jesus Christ was. Each of us is offered hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Like Peter, we all stumble and we all fail from time to time. Like Peter, the Lord offers to us grace each time we stumble, not punishment. When we realize the extent of the grace of Jesus Christ, it makes us want to serve him more faithfully, more fervently. Peter went on to preach on Pentecost and led the beginning of the church, uh, infant church, to revolutionize the entire world. He wrote two books of the New Testament. He died a martyr's death, they say, crucified upside down. My hope for today is insured because Jesus Christ lives. I know that he's going to be faithful to me always. 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. It doesn't matter whether you and I believe or not, Jesus Christ is not going to deny himself. He is always faithful. So my hope for today is insured because Christ is risen. My hope for tomorrow is assured. 
and insured. I can be sure that no matter what difficulty I face, Jesus Christ is with me. Through the storms of life, although they may blow my way, I will never, ever, ever walk alone. Folks, as we have said for the last many weeks, we are not walking alone through what we're dealing with right now in our, in our nation and around the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is with us, and He hath promised us never to leave us nor forsake us. If we belong to Him, folks, we're as secure and as safe as we can be. Listen, we're all going to die one day. The Bible tells us, for it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And so we are all going to die one day. There is none that is going to escape death. Some folks say, well, I'm going to be raptured away. Yes, my friend, you may be raptured away, but you're not taking this body to heaven. You're going to, you're going to be uh, uh, caught up and taken up and given a glorified body designed to endure for all of eternity in that wonderful place called heaven where you will never grow old, you'll never die, there'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death, and no more sickness. Amen. Think about that. We have that assurance. We have hope for tomorrow. No matter what tomorrow brings, my friends, we have hope for it because we're not going through what we're going through alone. Jesus Christ is right there with us all the way. And if we die, we gain all of heaven. Amen? Thirdly, my hope for eternity is ensured. When this life is over, I will meet with the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says, Beloved, that's us. That's the believers in Christ, the dear saints. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. The day that I take my last breath, will be the day that I see my Lord face to face. Whatever day that is, it is beyond my control. I have no choosing. I am in the hands of one who is greater than me. I'm in the hands of one who is in control of all things. I have nothing to fear. I know that my eternity is secure. When my time comes, I will depart from this body and from this life, enter into the glorious realm of heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll be reunited with my loved ones, my mother, my father, my grandparents, my two sisters that have already gone on in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see them again, and what a day that's going to be, a glorious celebration. The resurrection means a lot of things, folks. It probably means a lot more than what I've given you. But I want you to understand the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees my salvation and your salvation if you trust it in Christ with all of your heart in faith. A lot of people have a head knowledge, but they do not have a heart knowledge. With all of the inner being knowing that Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who loves us and gave himself for us on the cross of Calvary, where he died willingly sacrificing and shedding his own innocent, sinless blood, paying for the sin of the world. If you've never trusted in Jesus Christ, my friend, let me encourage you, please, 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 trust in the Lord Jesus Christ right now before it is eternally too late. Please, don't hesitate, don't wait. Jesus Christ arose from the dead, proving that God accepted, accepted his death as full and final payment for the sin of the world. And as a risen, resurrected Savior, He stands wide open and offers eternal life to all who will come to Him and call upon Him for salvation. If you haven't trusted in Christ, I pray you'll trust in the Lord Jesus Christ right now. For some, resurrection of Jesus Christ means everything. We have staked our life now and for eternity on Jesus Christ's resurrection. My advice for us is to never give up, never give out, and never give in. To keep on keeping on because one day, one day, we'll see the reward of our faith. For others, the resurrection is something to kind of ponder, to think about. It's curious. It makes you think. 
It challenges it to, to, to assess your life and see where you're at. My advice to you is do not drift away. Stay close. Stay tuned in. Get in the Word of God. Study the Bible and you'll see that it is for real. And then sadly for still others, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means absolutely nothing. You question the validity of the Bible, the Word of God, and the validity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. My friend, the Bible tells us He is not here, for He has risen. Come see the place where the Lord lay. He is risen. He is alive. And He is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for you and for me and for all who have called upon Him and asked for forgiveness of sin and salvation from an eternity in the place called hell. I pray that you'll do that today before it's too late. I ask you, if you died today, are you 100% certain you would be in heaven? I can't answer that for you, but I can answer it for me. The choice, my friend, is all yours. Let us pray. Father, I pray today that you take the message that has been given and that you'd speak to each heart. Lord, if there be a soul listening or watching today that has not trusted in Jesus Christ, I pray that they'd bow their head right now and just cry out and say, Lord Jesus, I know that you're living, you've risen from the dead, and I'm a lost sinner in need of a salvation and a Savior. Would you please save my soul from an eternity in hell? And God, I pray that they do something along those lines, and Father, that you'd hear their prayer, and I know you will if they'll call, and you'll forgive them of their sin and save their soul. Lord, I thank you today for the opportunity to open the Word, and I pray that you've taken the Bible and, and challenged us, Lord. Lord, what a, what a glorious day we're celebrating, the day when death has been defeated and sin in the grave no longer hold power over all who believe. Father, I also pray if, uh, right now for our country. I pray for the, what's going on in our, within our borders, and I pray for the world in which we live also, Lord. But I pray that you just give our president the much-needed wisdom and strength, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for sending him to, to, to be the leader of our country at a time, Lord, when, when we most certainly need a man who's not afraid to stand up and speak out and tell it like he believes it is. God, he may not always be right, but I believe he is your man for the hour. You're the one who establishes kings, kingdoms, and puts people in place and in power. I pray for Vice President Pence. I pray, pray for our senators, our representatives. I pray for all of our government officials right down to the, uh, the, the local level. Lord, that you'd give these dear folks wisdom as they try to help uh, keep everyone safe and yet keep things on track. And God, we certainly need you. Would you intervene here, Father? Would you do a work, Lord? Would, I, would you bring revival, Lord, to the United States of America and to the world? May there be a true revival felt. Lord, during this time, may folks really begin to question and seek answers. And I pray that the resurrection of Jesus Christ would challenge them to search their hearts because many are dying from this dreaded plague. And dear God, some of them are dying and stepping out into an eternity in hell, but they don't have to. All they've got to do is come to you in faith and ask, and they'll receive salvation. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your blessings, and we pray it and humbly ask it in Jesus' name with much thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Until we see you again, God bless.